everyone and welcome back to another episode of The Wedding Circle. This episode feels like a step into the real world of podcasting and is a really big moment for myself in April as we have recorded our very first interview and it was with the one and only Natalie Kate makeup artist. So we reached out to Natalie when we first started planning The Wedding Circle as we knew that she would be the perfect first guest. She is a true expert in her field. She has the most wonderful reputation as a bridal makeup artist and we know how much she loves the industry and how much she would love talking about it to us. Now, as I am sure you are aware, we are still having to remotely record our episodes. So we really hope the conversation is enough to keep you hooked, even though the quality may not be 100% perfect. So with that in mind, we think this will be an episode that you will totally love. We hope it answers some of your questions if you're looking for a bridal makeup artist. And again, we want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts for listening in and joining us for episode four. the wedding circle episode four today we're really excited to share with you that we have our first supplier to interview and share with you so today we have got natalie kate makeup artist natalie is from lincolnshire and she's going to talk to us today all things wedding makeup and all things skincare ready for your big day so hi nat hello i'm so excited fab thank you no thank you for joining us we're really excited to have you so Natalie, if you could start by telling us just a little bit about you and your business, like how did you get into the makeup industry and what do you love about the wedding industry? Of course. So I'm obviously Natalie. Um, I've been doing this now for around nine years, um, which makes me feel like it's been going on forever now. It still feels like two years to me. Um, But I first sort of got into the makeup industry um, while I was at university. Um, I was doing a degree and I'm really really creative and the degree just wasn't creative I sort of just went there because I felt like I had to go to uni Um, and I started doing a bit of modelling on the side which is so many moons ago now Um, but quickly realised that when I was sort of getting my hair and makeup done I preferred that side of things so I just got into it purely through that really Um, so I enrolled on at the time Um, you had to sort of do um, qualifications whereas now you can be self-taught so at the time I enrolled through college um, to do makeup artistry and with that there's so many different um, sort of sections that you would do so everything from sort of film and tv and special effects and then bridal and sort of bridal was the as soon as I started doing it I thought oh my god this is where like my passion lies Um, and then it literally snowballed from there Um, so yeah, it feels like it feels like forever, but it doesn't. Um, yeah, and with the industry itself, as you guys will know, I feel like it's the whole buzz and the feeling that you get from a wedding. Um, obviously, the build-up and everything is exciting anyway, but just the buzz on a wedding morning is just amazing. Um, and I am <laughs> everyone that knows me will know I'm such an emotional person. I'm so soppy. Um, so <laughs> just being mm. a part of someone's like it's basically the most important day of someone's life or yeah. one of the most important days yeah so. absolutely it's um you I think it's just nice to be part of something really positive isn't it like it, it, is. doesn't, it doesn't matter what you do in that day it's yeah. being part of something really positive and a really happy moment and being part of those memories isn't it so yeah definitely it must feel so nice to be able to like make somebody feel the most wonderful and beautiful they've ever looked as well. Oh. Like I can't imagine like make, making somebody up and then them looking in the mirror and being like, oh my goodness, that's me. Honestly, mm-hmm. like that is, especially, I mean, it's so incredible for every bride, no matter who you're working with, but there are um, some clients that I can think of straight away over the years that have maybe, they've never worn makeup before or they've maybe just had a baby and they don't feel themselves. Or they might have struggled with the skin, like the whole life, they might have had like acne and scarring and everything like that. And when you can help them feel so much more beautiful in their own skin, yeah. with and without makeup as well, sometimes it comes part and parcel with it. Um, oh, yeah. And they walk down the aisle with like such a sort of, 
yeah skip in their step that's oh. it and I, I miss that bit I don't get obviously get to see them walk down the aisle but you do Sophie I, I do yeah oh I God. absolutely <laughs> love that bit that is my favorite bit of weddings it's what, yeah. watching them walk down the aisle and seeing them all ready in their dress and their oh, makeup yeah. and their hair and everything yeah I love it and I know that you've been up there since like six o'clock in the morning I working know. out with them and the bridesmaids <laughs> and everything that's it it's not always glamorous people do think oh my god you spend all day painting faces but you are getting up at 3 30 4 a.m some mornings my kit oh. is the heaviest thing in the world oh, I have the worst yeah. back ever <laughs> oh bless you for future clients and brides and anybody that's wanting their makeup done do you have a portfolio of work that you can show them or are they better off sort of going to your website finding you on social media and that kind of thing um, so I used to have a portfolio. I've always been really old fashioned as in actually having a book portfolio. Um, but that's obviously always with me anyway. So for clients mainly to find me and see all that work, literally now it is just social media. Um, I've got a website that I always update and everything like that. Um, and a lot of it is word of mouth as well, I find nowadays. Mm-hmm. You guys are probably the same. Um, but word of mouth is just brilliant. Yeah. Definitely. And and is it mainly bridal that you specialise in or do you have lots of other clients, you know, for proms and things like that? Um, so bridal is my sort of speciality now and it's mainly, it's all I'm known for at the moment. And um, I still do a lot of prom and I do a lot of occasion makeup, but I find I am that busy now at the moment with bridal that I just sort of just take over everything, yeah. if that makes sense. I do just prioritise yeah, definitely. it. I see you as like you know I see your your website and I'll see you on social media and it's Natalie Kate makeup artist but immediately your social media screams out bridal to me yeah. um and yeah just I think that is definitely your sort of area of expertise and it, and it really shows definitely I think when I first started I, I did every style of makeup and don't get me wrong I absolutely loved it and I still do dip back into different things but for me I just like to stick with what I know I'm good at and what I know my clients love me for if that makes sense I think it's good to be known as an expert in your in your field as well so yeah the fact that you are known to be an expert in bridal makeup it just builds that confidence with your with your future clients doesn't it that like this yeah, lady knows definitely. what she's doing um she know and you've been there and done it so many times it gives them that confidence even just from a process point of view in the morning like they yeah. know you'll be there on time they know that you'll get theirs done on time. They'll know that you'll get to all the bridesmaids, even though there's 30 of them today. <laughs> yeah. Like, it, it's that confidence piece from being an expert as well. So I think that's really good. Definitely. And I think as well, obviously, as you guys will know, with your relationships in the industry, um, with different suppliers, because I work really closely with a lot of venues, a lot of videographers, photographers. And I think when they know you, and I know them as a specialist in something, it just gives you that confidence to be able to refer on to your clients. Um, yeah, we've yeah. talked about that before, haven't we, Sophie? About uh, And that's kind of really why the Wedding Circle came about. It's around, you, you when you recommend suppliers, it is a reflection on you. So what we wanted to do yeah. was create a, a group and kind of like a community of people of who we genuinely believe are the best in their their kind of industry um, and can really, it'll show us all in the best light, if that makes sense. Yeah, totally. No, it's such a good idea. And I think there isn't, um, when I was speaking to Sophie about it in the very early days, there isn't anything else like this um, where you guys can recommend other suppliers that you work with and vice versa. Yeah. So going um, forward for anybody that wants to book you and things. So a couple of the sort of questions that I think people are going to want to know the answers to are things such as, do you offer a makeup trial before the big day? Can they speak to you about the look that they want to create? Because obviously everybody has their own sort of style when it comes to doing their own makeup um, and don't often have other people do their makeup for them. So they might be nervous that, you know, somebody else putting their face on, it's not going to be quite what they want. No, always. I always, always recommend a trial. Um, obviously, from a makeup perspective anyway, but I think it's so important that you get on with your suppliers. And I like people to feel so comfortable around me. Um, and I'm obviously there at intimate moments as well. I'm turning up and you're literally in your pyjamas with no makeup on. And it's quite intimidating sometimes if you've never met that person. So for me, I always recommend a trial purely just to break the ice. And like you say, 
to try different looks because some people have never worn makeup before, they've never had it done professionally before. And sometimes it's just, they have so much pressure on themselves because they're thinking, I'm a bride, I have to look a certain way. And for me, it's just about making them feel relaxed and you don't have to go with a set look because you've seen it on Instagram or Pinterest. You need to you need to feel comfortable in your own skin. Um, and my style is all about enhancing, not masking. So I like people to look like the best possible version of themselves. But that version is what they've created with me, not because they think they have to have that, if that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. And I suppose... Um because I know that you have um, a salon called The Blossom Rooms and it specialises in all areas of skincare. And if you yeah. have any of your clients come in for, you know, re- over a regular, um, on a regular basis over a period of time before the wedding, you develop a relationship with them anyway and you can get chatting about, um, you know, all areas of their skincare and then kind of get to know their style and things. So, so can you tell us a bit more about The Blossom Rooms? Of course. So with that, it was, I sort of thought of the idea of the blossom rooms because nothing used to bring me more joy than seeing, like you said earlier, the look on someone's face when they see what you've created. Um, And for women, especially, skin is such an important thing that so many of my clients on the run up to their wedding day were so anxious and stressed about a tiny little breakout or hormonal skin. Um, So that is where sort of the idea of the blossom rooms came from. So there was years worth of work that went into that sort of going back and doing like qualifications and going back to different colleges and like massive day courses weeks away it was crazy at the time and but the whole idea behind that was to make my clients feel amazing with makeup but then also without and give them that build up before their wedding day but then also it is obviously open to any client whether they're getting married or not Um, yeah and how great is it to have, you know, a makeup artist that's there, like you said, on the most important day of your life, that also is a specialist in skin and understands, yeah. you know, that area of, of sort of everything so intently. And, and you, like you say, you've gone away and you've studied and, and all of that. Like that mean, would mean so much to me if I were looking for a makeup artist, you know, that you, you obviously know your stuff. Definitely. And I think as well, skin is so it's one of those things like I said earlier that people get so self-conscious about but everybody is so different there just isn't what I've learned over the years is there isn't a one-size-fits-all for every client you can't just open a book and think right you've got this skin type this product will be good for you everyone is very very different so when I can gain that relationship with my client over time and on their wedding day I literally know their skin inside out I know Mm. that the makeup is going to last they're going to love it but it's also going to look lovely in real life as well as on photographs as well yeah because that's that's part of the confidence piece again isn't it about yeah about the brides feeling confident that they're going to look amazing but equally they're just confident in themselves anyway um I think it's just it's really nice to hear that you you create an experience it's not just about like you say that morning when you turn up and they're in the pj still yeah. like it is a it's a full experience so I think that's that's really nice do you not do you have like a studio for that for for the blossom rooms or like how where do you do that yeah so I've got my own clinic um so I literally it is just me working here um it's on a one-to-one basis I never wanted it to be where it's sort of one in one out on the you know just it's so full all day and I wanted it to be very personal and my service I've always prided myself on offering a more luxury service. So I think that one-to-one basis and just being able to sit and talk and show me their skin without makeup, because again, it is a big confidence thing. If you think you've been anywhere before for sort of a beauty treatment and you've had to go without makeup, it is sometimes quite intimidating. So for clients just coming to me and they know it's only me, there's nobody else. Um, And I've seen them maybe a hundred times. They're, just yeah they're so much more confident around me so going to um you know talking about a a sort of back to a wedding how what how does the wedding morning work how long does it take um if they've got a massive bridal party lots and lots of bridesmaids and things do you take somebody with you perhaps or um you know is it is it just you so it's very 50 50 um it all depends on the bride I would say so there are some weddings that are the most relaxed, 
chilled, easy mornings ever. And then there were others where there were so many people in and out of the room. There's maybe 12 bridesmaids. There's so many family members. So with every morning, I just sort of go with the flow um, and fit yeah. into and help where I can, basically. Um, but I have done by myself as many as, as 12 makeups before. And yeah. that is an early start. But I do take an assistant with me if I have got, say, for example, um, maybe 10 bridesmaids, bride, mother's a bride, mother's a groom. I will always take someone with me, um, even if it's just to help me clean the brushes in between um, and everything like that. But, yeah, some mornings I can be there two hours. Other mornings I can be there maybe seven hours. So every oh, wow. wedding is very different. <laughs> And do you always travel to the venue or do you go to the bride's house or do they have to come to you? I literally go wherever. So <laughs> I, on someone's wedding morning, I would never, ever expect them to come to me because I think I should be the one that has to deal with traffic and getting fuel and all that sort of stuff. I can't, I could never have a bride having to deal with that stress on her wedding morning. So I yeah. go literally wherever. So I've been to parents' houses before, I've been to bride's houses. Um, I've been to hotel rooms, venues, wherever they need me, I turn up. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah. So you yeah. go all over. Yeah. <laughs> You're so flexible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so the next sort of thing I wanted to talk to you about was um, the actual makeup itself. So what yeah. brands do you use? What are your favourite brands of makeup? What trends do you see coming up um, for bridal makeup? So I will admit I am a little bit of a brand snob purely just because yeah <laughs> we all just, are oh, we all I know are. and I think as well it it's your wedding day like yeah. everything has to be the best of the best oh, I'm yeah. doing a luxury service this should be something that these clients can't just reach for these products in boots or super drug not that there's anything wrong with that but do you know what I mean I know what you mean like, yeah you want them to feel completely luxury, 100%. Yeah. Um, so my sort of favourites are um, brands like Nars, Becca, um, Laura Mercier, uh, Charlotte Tilbury, Bobby Brown. I love Tom Ford, Chanel. So yeah, I am a proper brand snob. But I find oh. that that's where when you invest in your kit, and I do a lot of lessons and things, so I tell this to people all the time. When you invest in your kit and your brushes and things, uh, you can really trust the product and you know that it's going to work. When you leave that wedding, you know that they're going to look incredible all day and all night. You don't have to worry about it. Yeah, rather than sort of wearing a, a lipstick that, you know, costs 99p and you know it's going to come off within yeah. 10 minutes. Yeah, we all it. over the gone. <laughs> that's it. I mean, that's, <laughs> I mean, that's fine for a night out if that's what you want. But for your wedding day, I just think I only get one shot at doing that perfect. So for me, I have to have so much faith and trust in my kit um and that's yeah. what my bride's paying for at the end of the day to feel and look amazing all day and all night yeah definitely and do you so I can't remember I went I went, maybe had my makeup done once somewhere and they offered me like a tiny pot of the lipstick do you offer yeah. anything like that so they can, they can top it up during the day yeah so always just for the bride um just because again the bride is the most important on a bridal morning um, so I do offer a little bit more for a bride. So they get like a thorough skin prep and mini facial and stuff before, but then they do get an, um, whatever lipstick they choose, they get that as a lip sort of brush in a compact to keep. And a lot of my brides, when I see them out, I could be down at the local pub and I see a bride come into the bathroom and she's still got the little lipstick and she's like, it's my favourite colour and it's Aww. so lovely because they get to keep it. That's nice. Yeah, that's really nice. So... Now, what would you like? What advice would you give to a bride who's looking for the right makeup artist? Um, like, how far in advance do they need to book? Um, what do you think is like the important thing that they come to you with, like with regards to what they want from you? Like, what do you want to know and stuff? So, I would probably say the sooner that you can book, the better. Um, again, as you two will know, we book up so as any business, you book up so so quick. Um. So for me now, I'm taking bookings into 2023. So I just say to everybody, as soon as you have your date and you know your preferred suppliers, get in contact with them as soon as possible. Um, but when you are looking for a makeup artist, I would probably say look at their style and their work, first of all, and make sure that that's fitting with the sort of look that you're going for. Um, in my early days, people would bring in a picture that they'd maybe found on Pinterest and it was 
the complete opposite of my work and as an artist it's a little bit of a struggle then because you're trying to recreate someone else's work um yeah you're and not staying true to your ego. that's it you're not I have a similar problem with music yeah. I uh, people say to me can you sing this particular song and I'll go yes but it's going to be in my style and oh yeah. well, I really wanted it to be you know to sound like the original well <laughs> you know like I'm not Beyonce definitely <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, try, so. oh, yeah we'd love to be like Beyonce but we're not we <laughs> and that's the thing I think everybody has their own quirks their own style and that's what makes you you and I think now that's what makes my brides in particular book me is because of the style um so I think just staying true to yourself anyway as a creative person you'll always get the best results so definitely like stick with their theme if that's the style that you like inquire with that artist 100 percent. but then also again like i said earlier meet with the person have a facetime consultation call them just feel that you get on really well and you want to spend time on your wedding day with these suppliers um because they are there like i say if i'm there for seven hours we need to get along <laughs> yeah seven hours is a long time you know in the morning Definitely. before the ceremony <laughs> But yeah, you definitely need to feel you get along with these people. A hundred percent. I think on a wedding morning, we do see it all. So people are really nervous. They may be really upset. Or sometimes people just ring me while I'm on the way and say, oh my gosh, I've forgotten deodorant or whatever it is. Can you nip and get this for me? And I think you need to feel comfortable with me and with your suppliers to be able to ask them to help out and to do these favours and just to be there for you on the day. Yeah, how nice is that though? That people feel like they, that's like they feel like you're a friend, doesn't it? By by you know by the time of the wedding morning, that's really nice. I think it. That's all I've ever done, really. Though so it's all I've known, but I do think it is a big part of it when I do see my brides um, like getting on so well with the photographer, the videographer. Like the morning is just a breeze. Like it's so lovely. It's so stress free. Um, and yeah, I just think everybody gets the best results. The suppliers work to the best of their ability, and the bride and her party at the end of the day are going to have the loveliest morning and the loveliest start to their wedding celebration. I was going to ask, have you ever been asked to put any makeup on any of the guys? So the reason I ask is because on my wedding day, Wayne <laughs> fell over the day before the wedding and gave himself a black eye. <laughs> Oh, and if yeah. we'd have had a makeup artist we didn't actually have a makeup artist I just took it myself quickly but if we'd have had somebody I would definitely have sent them down to his room and said please can you cover up his black eye for goodness sake have you ever had that yeah I've had that quite a few times and also <laughs> um one of my brides from last year her dad as I was there on the morning so I've just basically finished everyone's makeup and her poor dad was pottering for me around outside because he just didn't know where to put himself and he started building a wall I don't know why and he dropped I know she did on your daughter's wedding morning bless him I think he was just nervous um but as he was building this wall he dropped a breeze block from height onto his face oh, um Sophie you'll have, you'll have to ask Stefan about this because he was there doing the videography <sighs> and it split across his nose luckily it didn't break his nose no but it just split sort of in two um so after he'd sort of sorted himself out and done like a bit of a botched DIY job on his nose, he came over and he was like, is there anything you can do about this? So I just did what I could. Concealer. <laughs> You're away. I know. I was so nervous as well because I was like, the whole morning's gone so lovely. And then he just came in with pouring blood out of his nose and he was like, can you help me? Oh, no. Oh, so yeah. has anything else, oh, no. you know, memorable or funny happened at a wedding that you can tell us about? Or do you think that's probably the most memorable thing? Um, that was memorable just because it really sort of, the whole morning, like I said, gone so, so lovely. So that was just like, oh, my gosh, what has he done? Um, but I'd probably say, like, funny little memories. It's probably to do with, like, rogue bridesmaids. There's always one every so often um, who just gets so drunk, it's hilarious. Mm -hmm. um I mean me the hairdresser everybody were in fits of giggles but obviously the bride is not too pleased 
Um, so it's mainly just trying to sober up a bridesmaid sometimes. <laughs> yeah. So not only are you the makeup artist, but you're also there with a glass of water. Come on, yeah, please, off together. And a coffee and some toast. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> Peacekeeper, trying to keep the peace. I know, honestly, we do see it all. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay, so Nat, can you, like wrapping up the podcast, so can can you nominate someone who you think we should um, interview as our next guest on the Wedding Circle podcast? Ooh, as soon as you've got so many contacts I know I'd probably say there's like three but do I have to choose one or can I nominate all three? Oh, all three go on right so Stefan at Lincoln to Videography because Stefan yeah. as you'll Amazing. know can talk and I just love listening to him yeah um Hazel at Hearst Priory because she's just an absolute expert in everything and anything yeah and I would say Kelly Hank's hair design. Um, she's a hairdresser that I've met recently and worked with quite a lot. And she is, well, she's just been named hairdresser of the year for the whole of the UK in bridal. Oh, um, amazing. So she knows her stuff. Yeah, she's, and I, again, I could sit and speak to Kelly all day. She's like our type of woman. She's amazing. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, we'll definitely get in touch with those three. Um, you know, if, if they're listening and they hear their names, then they can get in touch with us and they must come on because that sounds awesome. Uh, yeah, we'd love to chat to Sorry, you. guys. The pressure's <laughs> on now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, thank you so much for coming on today, Nat. We we really appreciate you taking out your time, you know, especially as, as it's in you know, the middle of the evening and I know you've got a little boy and it's probably his bedtime. Um, it's but fine. No, we, we you really got me out of the bedtime, we see. <laughs> I know, that's, what, that's the same for me as well. I've got two children and they're upstairs with daddy at the moment. But no, we really appreciate you coming on we are so excited that you're our first ever guest and we can't wait to get this podcast out so everyone can listen to it and hear about you and your wonderful business um I can definitely vouch for you you've done my makeup and I felt a million dollars um so yeah I think you're amazing thank you so much for coming on well thank you for having me this is like amazing like to be your first guest is so so exciting but just to actually speak to other humans outside of my house at the moment is absolutely <laughs> oh no tell me about it oh, not just the dog <laughs> yeah. and the kids i know oh. Oh, dear me. well no thank you ever so much for having me we've loved it thank you thanks Matt. Right. thank you we really hope you enjoyed listening to our conversation with natalie If you want to see some of Natalie's amazing work, you can find her on Instagram and Facebook at NatalieKateMUA or you can head to her website www.NatalieKateMakeupArtist.com Natalie is based in Lincolnshire, but she travels pretty much anywhere, including destination weddings, so if you get in touch, I'm sure she'll be more than happy to help. And if you enjoyed listening to the episode, we would love it if you could head over to our iTunes and leave us a review so that more and more brides and grooms-to-be can find us and listen. I also wanted to let you know that we are now available to listen to on YouTube, so just search The Wedding Circle and we should pop up. So please do get in touch if there's anything that you want us to cover. We love to hear from you all and any suggestions are greatly received. After all, this podcast is for you, our listeners, so feel free to drop us an email or message us over on social media. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.